Everest, Kilimanjaro, Aconcagua, Denali. These are no places for women, they told her. Mount Elbrus, keep your feet on the ground, they reminded her. Mount Vincent, you will find no husband here, they said to her. Punjak Jaya. These are our mountains, they declared. You are not welcome here. By the end of her life, she had proved them wrong time and time again. Welcome to the Aquatane Project, a podcast that invites you to step into the light of some pretty remarkable women and learn a little, grow a little, laugh a little, and shine a lot. I'm Marlo Mead, your host, guide, and fellow traveler on a journey where together we draw upon the lessons, wisdom, and experiences of women past and present. Women I affectionately call my bright lighters. Each episode, I'll bring to light their stories, voices, and legacies, inspiring each of us to become bright lighters in our own right. For me, these women transcend time, teaching us lessons we can use in our own lives each and every day, shining their light from different centuries, cultures, and corners of the earth. They light the way, making it possible for each of us to create our own light and shine it forward. To walk among the clouds and stand atop the world is no small feat. To do so in the face of sexism and extreme pressures to conform to cultural norms takes a special kind of willpower and determination. In May of 1975, a petite, unassuming Japanese woman laced up her climbing boots for the millionth time and set herself on a path no woman before her had ever traveled. Years of planning, preparing, and dreaming led her to this place in time. She had been all over the world and climbed many mountains, but this mountain called to her. This mountain spoke to her spirit. This mountain the tallest in all the world, was her destiny. But destiny would have to wait. There is a saying in Japan that goes like this, the nail that sticks up will be hammered down. Such is the fate of women, not just in Japan, but around the world who dare to strike out on their own and choose their own paths. My bright lighter this episode embodies the determined spirit that tenacious voice inside that urges us to forge our own paths and do what we set out to do, no matter the odds, no matter the obstacles, no matter what. No, it's not easy. Yes, there will be haters, dream killers, doubters, and naysayers. But to get to where we want to go, accomplish what we want to accomplish, reach our goals, make our dreams our reality, We must rise above the noise, silence our critics, especially the ones in our own heads, go under, over, and around whatever gets in our way. We've got to have confidence in the road we choose and in our ability to follow that road to where we want it to take us. We all know the saying, 
A journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So, let's step into the light of this high climbing woman and see what we can learn about our own journey. When 10 year old Junko Tabay went on an overnight hiking trip with her classmates, she discovered a whole new world. Standing on the top of Mount Nasu in her hometown of Fukushima, Japan, she fell in love with the feeling of being high above the town, free, happy, one with nature and the mountain. It was an experience she would never forget, and one that would lead her to become the first woman to climb the highest, most challenging mountains in the world. For a girl growing up in early 20th century Japan, adhering to very specific gender roles was the expectation. Women were, and in certain areas still are, expected to get married, have children, and become homemakers, going to college and working in traditional female jobs such as teachers or nurses, was also expected. But climbing mountains? Out of the question. Dreams of adventure were not appropriate for young Japanese women. Undeterred by these social pressures, Junko continued to climb while she was in college. The mountains were where she discovered her true self, where she was most free. Early in her climbing career, Junko faced quite a few sexist attitudes. It was the 1960s, after all, and mountain climbing was still a man's world. After graduating, she joined several mountaineering clubs in search of climbing partners and opportunities to join expeditions. Many of the men in the mountain club actually refused to climb with her. There were a few older climbers who were more supportive, but most believed Junko wasn't really interested in climbing expeditions. She was on a husband-hunting expedition. Now, ladies, I know some of us have gone to some pretty extreme lengths to find a man, but climbing thousands of feet in the air, carrying a heavy backpack filled with ropes and carabiners, trying not to die and look sexy doing it, Not the safest or most efficient way to find a husband. Or was it? By the mid-60s, she had climbed all of Japan's highest mountains, including Mount Fuji. And wouldn't you know it, she just happened to meet her husband, Masanabu Tabe, a renowned mountaineer in his own right, on one of her more dangerous climbs. I guess she knew what she was doing after all. Her family disapproved of Junko marrying this man because he did not have a university degree. But once again, Junko refused to let others determine the course of her life. She had found a man who shared her passion for the mountain and who years later would fully support her decision to give up her day job as a teacher so she could focus on climbing full time. He would stay home and take care of the children. Head to the hills, sisters, if you want to find a man like that. Tired of butting heads with conservative Japanese ideas about the place of women in society? Remember the hammer and the nail? Junko founded her own mountaineering club, and in 1969, the Joshi Tohan Club for Women was born. I absolutely love this club motto. Let's go on an overseas expedition by ourselves. Did you hear that, fellas? A group of women flying, or should I say climbing, in the face of convention, came together to forge their own paths up the mountains, and you better believe there was some pushback from the good old boys club. This all-woman club was often criticized, and finding sponsorships was very difficult. Do you think that stopped this intrepid band of mountain-climbing women? Absolutely not. Junko refused to sacrifice her dreams on the altar of sexism and misogyny and led the very first all-women ascent to Annapurna III, a 24,747-feet-tall mountain in Nepal. Let me repeat that. The very first all-women ascent of one of the tallest mountains on the planet. This act of defiance, self-reliance, unwavering trust in themselves and each other is awe-inspiring, not just in the fact that they made history for their accomplishment. What truly inspires me is the knowledge that as women, as sisters, when we come together and focus on a goal, we can accomplish some pretty amazing things. But the path up the mountain is no cakewalk. 
Junko shows us no one can do the work and climb the countless steps it takes to reach the top for us. We have to find our own determination, our own drive, that thing that pushes us forward to reach our goals no matter what. The day we let go of everyone else's expectations of who we should be, what we should do, and where we should go in life is the day we begin to forge our own path, and in my mind, is the way to true happiness. It just so happens that Junko Tabay's path to happiness led her to some of the most desolate, majestic, dangerous places atop the world. After making history in 1970, Junko set her sights on the holy grail of the mountain climbing world, Mount Everest. There is an expression well known in the mountain climbing community as the three rules of mountaineering. It's always further than it looks. It's always taller than it looks. It's always harder than it looks. Okay, we're going to take a little side trip through mountaineering history right now, so stick with me. Mount Everest, a peak in the Himalaya mountain range, is located between Nepal and Tibet. It stands 8,849 meters, that's 29,032 feet for those of us not on the metric system, above sea level, and is considered the tallest point on Earth. In the 19th century, the mountain was named after George Everest, a former surveyor general of India. Its Tibetan name is Chomo Lungma, which means Mother Goddess of the World. That makes perfect sense to me. Its Nepali name is Sagar Mata, which has various meanings. The first ever recorded climb to Mount Everest were Edmund Hillary, that's Sir Edmund Hillary, a mountaineer from New Zealand, and his Tibetan Sherpa, Tenzig Norgay. They climbed the mountain in 1953 and hold the record together. Did you know that the term Sherpa, while usually used to mean mountain guide, actually refers to an ethnic group? The Sherpa are an indigenous group that live in the valleys of the Himalayas. Climbing Mount Everest would be virtually impossible without their skill, knowledge, and unique ability to live at such high altitudes where the oxygen levels are so low. Told you you'd learn a little. In 1975, Junko and her ladies of Toshi Johan set out to climb Everest. At the age of 35, with a little daughter at home, thank you Masanabu for holding down the fort, Junko Tabe became the first woman to summit Mount Everest. Despite being buried in an avalanche, severely hurting her leg, extreme physical and mental exhaustion, Junko and her Sherpa, Aang Shering, reached the mountaintop on May 16, 1975. She became instantly famous, which was very unsettling to her. She didn't climb for fame or recognition. She did it because it was what she loved to do. So, she just kept on climbing. If you were to ask Junko why she climbed the tallest mountain in the world, and many people did, she would tell you, and I quote, Everest for me, and I believe for the world, is the physical and symbolic manifestation of overcoming odds to achieve a dream. Big dreams, big mountains, big bright example of what it takes to live your life your way. That's Junko Tabe. Now, you might think, wow, she did it. She reached her goal, climbed her mountain, and made it to the top. What's left for her to achieve? Well, I am so happy you asked. After her world-famous climb of Mount Everest, Junko continued doing what she loved, and by 1992, she accomplished another first. Junko Tabe became the first woman to climb the highest peaks on all seven continents. Known as the Seven Summits, Kilimanjaro in Africa, Aconcagua in South America, Denali in North America, Mount Elbrus in Europe, Mount Vinson in Antarctica, Poonchuk Jaya in Australia, and of course, Mount Everest in Asia. These mountains, each ecologically diverse and uniquely challenging, may have required different preparation, different approaches and strategies, but what stayed constantly true for Junko was her determined belief that her path up each and every mountain would lead to her goal the fulfillment of yet another dream, and the joy she found in the life she chose. 
Forging our own path through life is a unique proposition. No two people are alike, and as such, no two paths are the same. What I've learned from Junko Tabe, and by extension, the women of her Toshi Johan Women's Club, is the determination and willpower it takes to climb a mountain is the same determination and willpower it takes us to achieve our goals and create the life we want. I have found for me personally that if I stop, take a breath, and listen to my own intuition and inner guidance, I can feel which direction is right for me. Am I always right? No, but trusting your gut is a skill. You can work on it. You can develop it. And the more you practice it, the more you trust it. Finding the courage to trust it is the key. But there are some practical steps we can take to create our way in the world and keep ourselves on track. Here are a few that I've used, and they may help you. Creating your own path and setting your goals is much more than simply saying you want something to happen or you wish something to happen or you would really like something to happen. Unless you clearly define exactly what you want and understand why you want it in the first place, your odds of success could be pretty limited. So, here we go. 1. Write down your goals and dreams. Let's face it, we can daydream and fantasize till the cows come home. But until we have clarity on what we want to achieve, accomplish, or create in this life, it's hard to create the path to get there. Take time to write it all down. You may have many dreams and goals, maybe just a few, or maybe just one. Choose what feels right to you, then write down how you will feel when you've reached that goal. Let's say one year from now, you want to become a VP at your current company, or you want to apply to law or medical school. Maybe you want to open a dance or art studio. Okay, I'll say it. Maybe you even want to climb your first mountain. There, you happy? Whatever it is, what does that look like? What does it feel like? See yourself accomplishing what you set out to do. This type of reverse engineering visualization has become very popular with athletes, business people, artists of all types, and countless others. It's a very powerful tool. Give it a try, but not if you're driving or operating heavy machinery. Then, share your vision with those you trust and love and who love you. Sharing your dreams and goals with at least one other person helps you stay accountable to yourself. Two, next we need to create actionable steps that support the future we visualize and to reach our goal. I'm pretty sure Junko didn't just wake up one morning and say, Hey, I'm pretty good at this mountain climbing thing. I think I'll go out today and climb the highest mountains on the planet. No, it took her years of planning, preparing, and conditioning her mind, body, and spirit to meet the challenges she set out for herself. Think about the steps you will need to take to get to where you want to go. Do you need more education or training to become a VP? If so, what kind? Do you need to commit yourself to studying for law or medical school entrance exams? If so, what does that schedule look like? What resources do you need to help you prepare? Where do you find the funding and the right space to open up that studio? How do you find students? Taking the time to create your plan of action and being determined to stick with it are key ingredients to being successful at achieving what you set your mind to. Okay, a little honesty here. I am not great at this. Are you shocked? You should be. No, but really, I am really great at visualizing and feeling and even planning. But when it comes to harnessing that drive and determination I need to accomplish my goals, let's just say it's something I work on every day. That's why Junko is such an inspiration to me. If this woman could climb her mountains, then I, Marlo Mead, can climb mine. And sisters, so can you. So, we've clarified the goal, vision, or dream. We've visualized what it will feel like, sound like, taste like. You get my point. We make a plan and identify the steps we need to execute the plan. So far, so good. We are on our way. Smooth sailing, right? Well. Step three, remember earlier when I spoke about the haters and the dream killers and the naysayers? 
those people who disapprove of your choices or think they know better than you what path you should be on or flat out tell you your dream is impossible and you'll never reach your goals. These people have got to go. Stop listening to them. Tune out the noise. Stop listening to other people, other voices that do not align with your vision. Practice trusting your gut. This doesn't mean you ignore sound advice. It means comparing that advice with the direction you've set for yourself and act accordingly. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide who you listen to, other people or your own intuition and inner guidance. This last point is very important to me. Finding the path to joy. I believe when we forge our own path in the world, we find a special kind of joy. And I am all about joy at this point in my life. Finding joy, creating joy, sharing joy. When our visions, goals, and actions are based in joy, we just feel good. Those mountains seem a little easier to climb. All the accomplishments, big and small, leading us to where we want to go, are a little sweeter. Junko's path led her to the mountains, and those mountains were her joy. When asked about her mountaineering career and all the things she had accomplished, Junko Tabe said, Technique and ability alone do not get you to the top. It is the willpower that is the most important. This willpower you cannot buy with money or be given by others. It rises from your heart. So, In honor of this trailblazing, high-climbing bright lighter, let's challenge ourselves to be more determined in which paths we choose for ourselves, to dig deep and find the willpower we need to accomplish our goals and create a life that brings us joy. Junko Tabe's bright lighter legacy extends far past the mountaintops she reached in her own lifetime. After climbing the seven summits, she returned to school for a degree in environmental science. Experiencing firsthand the negative effects of the type of tourism that had developed on Mount Everest, she wanted to protect the mountains she loved and became the head of the Himalayan Head Trust of Japan. In 2012, she was diagnosed with cancer, but she refused to give up her dream of climbing mountains in every country. She just kept on climbing. In July of 2016, Junko led a group of young people from her hometown on a climbing expedition to Mount Fuji. Sadly, she died three months later. Her legacy of courage and determination lives on to light the way for all the women climbers who came after her, especially those whose path also led them up the tallest mountain in the world, Mount Everest. Women such as Ernima Sinya, the first amputee, Sophia Dannenberg, the first African-American woman, Arlene Blum, the first American woman to attempt to summit Mount Everest, and Stacey Allen, the first American woman to actually make the summit, Wanda Rutkovich, the first European woman, Malavath Purnia, the youngest woman at the age of 13, and Tame Watanabe, the oldest woman to summit Mount Everest. She actually did it twice once at 63, then again at 73. And there are countless other men and women who are following the light of Junko Tabe. Her incredible drive and willpower should inspire each of us to find it within ourselves to forge ahead on our own path, no matter how high the mountains that get in our way. Why I Love This Woman If you Google Junko today, you will find numerous articles, stories, and interviews about her life and accomplishments, all of them recounting her early life in Japan, her historic ascent of Mount Everest and the Seven Summits, her contributions to women in the world of mountain climbing, and finally, her dogged determination to continue climbing right up until her death. While I learned much about this amazing woman from my research, it was the images I found of her that truly spoke to me about who she really was. It is said a picture is worth a thousand words. For me, the pictures and photographs of Junko captured who she was in ways that words could never do. Sure, she was a woman, an adventurer, mountain climber, wife, mother, ecologist, teacher, and author. But if you take a deeper look... You see humility, humor, passion, 
iron-hard determination and willpower and an incredible sense of joy. There is a photo of her that accompanies her final interview before her death. You can find the link on the podcast website. She is the picture of a true bright lighter, and the pure joy on her face will melt your heart. Her smile says to me, look at me, high above the ground, clinging to rocks, making my own way. I am happy here. This is the path I chose. This is my joy. And I am happy here. What a remarkable life. What a remarkable woman. She lived life on her own terms, created her own path, and left a shining example for us of how willpower and determination and an unwavering belief in ourselves and the path we choose can get us to the top of our own mountain. So, what joys will you discover as you forge your own path in this world? Please feel free to share and connect with me at theaquataneproject.com. There, you will also find links to resources about this episode's amazing Brightliner. Until next time, climb high and shine bright, my Brightliners, so your sisters can find you.